Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for Vertica Unify 2021. Today's breakout session is entitled How a Nordic Telco Giant Harnessed Vertica for Outstanding Customer Service. I'm Joy King, and I lead Vertica product and go-to-market strategy. I'll be your host for this breakout session. Joining me is Alina Tuomenen, Service Manager at ELISA. But before we begin, I encourage you to submit questions during the virtual session. You don't have to wait. Just enter your question into the Q&A box on the right-hand side of the screen. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, and we'll answer as many questions as possible during that time. Any questions that we don't address, we'll do our best to answer offline. Alternatively, you can visit the Virtual Developer Lounge to ask additional questions and continue the conversation with our engineers and product experts after this session. And yes, this virtual session is being recorded and will be available to view on demand this week. We'll send you a notification as soon as it's ready. So please stick around to the end so you can get the code to gain points to participate in our Analyze to Win competition and win prizes. Now, let's get started. Over to you, Alina. Thanks, Joy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy that I got this uh, chance to present our ELISA Data Warehouse Renewable Project in this uh, Vertica Unified. I'm sorry that we cannot be in Boston right now, but hopefully next year we have a chance to talk face to face. If you want to chat with me later on, don't hesitate to contact me. You can always find me from LinkedIn, but uh, I will share my details a little bit later. So, as a background, uh, we started a vertical migration project planning in spring 2019. In this presentation, I would like to share with you about our steps that how did we end up to choose Vertica and how did we succeed in migration in record time. This project time schedule and COVID time was not optimal for success project, but I think we managed extremely well. First of all, I will go briefly what ELISA is doing and how we have developed over the years in data and analytics. Then I will talk about how we chose Vertica and got organized in migration project and tell you highlights about our development and implementation phases. Finally, we will get into summary part and then questions and answers at the end. I really hope that my presentation is useful for those persons and companies who are planning now to migrate into Vertica or thinking of changing the database engine. So who am I and what is Elisa doing? My name is Elena Tuominen and I'm working as a service manager since 2011 in Elisa in Finland in North Europe. I have been working in Elisa earlier also for four years, but did some consulting work a couple of years between. But then I came back to my roots to Elisa into telco business. I'm leading of enterprise BI team in data and analytics since 2018, so uh, three and a half years now. And my team consists of four solution managers, an architect, a production manager, and 11 external consultants. Our team is responsible about the uh, data platforms, BI tools, and enabling data and insights for business. I have a strong background in databases and data warehousing. I have started my career as application developer 25 years ago. Whew, time flies when you have fun, right? Before I came into my current team, I have worked as project manager, including several data centers, hardware, software, and database migrations and upgrade projects. I have always loved technical details and databases, and data is my passion. The more, the better. Even though I'm more organizing things nowadays than getting into technical details, I still have sometimes difficulties to keep my hands away from performance things. That's the feature which is just built inside of me. So, but that's, that's about, about me. What is ELISA then? ELISA is a telecommunication company working mainly in Finland and Estonia. One thing what I'm really proud of is our company's history and how ELISA has been there always for Finns. Actually, ELISA has been existed longer than Coca-Cola company. We have been able to renew our services during the years and been able to invent new things. This, that is uh, why we have been existing so long. 
Elisa was the first telecommunication company in Finland, and the first telephone line was implemented between Kaivopuisto restaurant and the opera house in Helsinki as early as 1882. In first years, there was 56 telephone numbers. During the years, Elisa has uh, has had a big influence on Finnish society, like serving and securing the communication lines during the Second World War. We have been also building the telephone network for Helsinki Olympic Games in 1952. But of course, the latest big news was when Elisa introduced commercial 5G network, first one in the world, not only in Finland and in Europe, but the whole world. And that is something that we can be really proud of. Here are some Elisa key figures. 2019 indicators are in brackets. Elisa is the biggest telecommunication company in Finland, almost with all the figures that you can think of. Our revenue was 1.89 billion in 2020. We have 5,000 employees in Finland and in Estonia, and we are one of the biggest taxpayers in Finland. We also take care of our employees, and we are one of the top 10 great places to work in Finland. Now in COVID-19 time, it's clearly visible that employees are happy with good connections and tools provided by Elisa. So it's not a cliche that you can basically work anywhere from Finland, like from your summer cottage, home or from the office, even from sauna. We have had the remote work possibilities already a long time before COVID time, and our way of working is very flexible. In Finland 2006, Elisa introduced unlimited data usage for fixed price. This means that you can watch videos, surf as much as you want to, without limitations within Finnish borders, and it will cost you something like uh, 20, 30 euros a month. This is the feature which I personally miss the most when I'm abroad. There I always need to watch out after the gigas used and live in my own personal life and my children's too. As you can see from this chart provided by Teficient, data usage per person uh, is the highest in, in the world. I would say that this is unlimited data usage feature is the reason. Finns uses average 22.4 gigabytes of month. Taiwan is pretty close as well as Latvia, but the others are far behind. Now I don't uh, un unfortunately have these figures from 2020 and 2021, but uh, it would be very interesting to see from those figures how the world has been changed after COVID. I'm pretty sure that the other countries have been increasing their data usage uh, as well after these charts. This data usage is driving Elisa to implement good working connections and the services on the top. No wonder that Elisa's mission is sustainable future through digitalization and data and analytics has a very important role of that mission. As a background, I want to show you our data storage history. This is how ELISA has developed over the years in data warehouse technology during my time. Data warehouse lifecycle has been mainly defined by hardware lifecycle. 20 years ago, we had Sybase IQ columnar database, nowadays known as SAP HANA, which was top technology at those days. It was good database engine and mainly stable. When we changed technology then to Oracle, the technology decision came from management. Change from columnar database into raw-based database took years, and we never really got Oracle to work as well as Sybase IQ. There were many reasons why that migration was not successful, but most of those things were not related to database engine itself. It was more of the application side changes and performance. To adjust the application to raw-based database was difficult, and this migration was a nightmare, I can tell you that. Then after five years, years we changed to NetEasa. Migration took about a year, so less than from Sybase to Oracle, but we needed to make many modifications again into loadings and reporting layer. Because we were happy with NetEasa, we kept going with the same technology and just upgraded the platform after five years. That was fast and migration took only about three months. So since then, we have used NetEasa the last 10 years before we changed into Vertical. What have we learned from these migrations? When the technology is changing, it will take at least one year to modify all components. 
and it will take a long time for a company to adopt the new database engine. Migration costs are huge. And what we have also learned is to make POC. As we say in Finnish, älä osta sikaa säkissä, which means that don't buy a pig in the back. You should always know what you are buying. Then we started the migration uh, planning in spring 2019. We set the goal as to replace Netisa data where ecosystem as is by newer, more efficient and more cost effective database engine alternative by the end of June 2020. All related software must be compatible with the new environment as little modifications as possible. As you can see, we did not concentrate on getting new database engine with lots of new features, but we were more concentrating on getting database engine which would work as well as NetEasa. As a lack of time, we needed to scope project for minimal things. The main reason for replacing NetEasa was that NetEasa lifecycle and support was ending. We had been also struggle with um, uh, disk space and hardware was not, not expandable. So we did not have any other option. Elisa was very happy with NetEasa and, and had journeyed for years. Also as a background, when you wonder later on that how did we end up on-prem when everyone is talking about cloud. I need to tell you that, that Finnish restrictions for some data handling is that data needs to be located within Finnish borders and everyone who handles this must have the Finnish security clearance made by Finnish authorities. So telecommunication business is very well secured by different rules and laws. Also, due to the lack of time, we excluded advanced analytics, big data handling from our scope. But of course, we also considered those features within database engine for the future niche. When I introduced this first time, some of my current and old colleagues were very skeptical about this. And I had several comments like, seriously, Elena, did you really present this timetable for management? You cannot really believe in this. You're going to be late at least six months, even a year. I just replied that I don't have any other timetable. And if someone can do it, it's, it's our team. I'm very happy that I was right. If you think about our early history in migration, they have always taken at least a year. And after deployment, we have had serious problems in performance. So this was our starting point not very promising. We were already late before we even started. So uh, that you will get the rough understanding what kind of work are we talking about. Here are our figures. We had about uh, 40 terabytes uh, data in Netisa, which had four time compression on. That ended up about 80 terabytes vertical disk space and 150 terabytes vertical license fees. We had about 500 ETL workflows about 300 MS reporting users and about 900 click users. We also had SaaS related applications and self-service users and about 30 other integrations to the ecosystem. Due to our long history in the market, our ecosystem is also quite complex. It's very hard to adopt. How did everything start? Uh, April 2019. RFP was sent to the selected vendors, including both cloud and on-prem technology. It would not be fair to mention in this case the other vendors than Vertica, but let's say that vendors were selected by DFA team and was mainly based on Gartner uh, statistics. And of course, our own vision of compatibility and our experience. We sent RFP to four vendors directly and then to our internal integrators, CGI and TCS, that they could present their own candidate. Unfortunately, the most interesting cloud database engines vendors were skipped because of the security aspects. We picked out from six candidates two database engines for POC phase. Criterias were based on this performance, compatibility to the other BI applications, cost, including hardware, software, data migration and implementation, maintenance. And I would say that these three were the most important for us. Then the others were features of the database engine, security, support and maintenance capabilities and further development of the database engine, scalability, 
time less in migration, and earlier experience of similar kind of implementations. Some of the candidates were ranked out right away because of the cost, either platform, license, or migration costs. Team made ranking and decision for the POC database engines and also DTA management was involved. Then in August, we started POC phase with two selected vendors. One of them, those, of course, was Vertica, and the other one you might guess. Uh, team defined careful use cases based on our ecosystem and defined those in two categories performance and compatibility. Performance tests were done by vendors' own data centers and compatibility tests then within the ELISA ecosystem. Both vendors had two weeks intensive session in ELISA office, Helsinki. So that was before COVID time. And it was just like sitting in a database administration course. It was extremely hectic time, but we learned a lot. All my team solution managers were attended also some of our internal consultants and vendor SWAT team. We tested the compatibility and we got understanding how that, uh, that why, what kind of uh, modifications needed to be done and how much work it would cost us. So we got very good overall knowledge of the database engine, both of them. After POC in September, each team member evaluated the results and scored both database engine based on RFP criteria and then POC results. Scale was from 1 to 5, and Vertica scored 2.9, and the other vendor 2.7. Very even results. Then I said to the team that we don't leave the room before we will pick up one of those two candidates. Each member had one vote, and then we chose Vertica. Have to admit that there was no big differences in features of database engine after all. We understood that migration would be very demanding in both cases. So why did we choose Vertica then? We emphasize two things most of all, compatibility and performance. And in both cases, Vertica was better. The other things were open architecture, uh, no extra cost for extending memory, uh, platform memory, CPU, and one very important thing uh, for us was uh, this overall uh, feeling from vendor in POC phase. I cannot emphasize this enough. We got this feeling that vendors own team is very excited about this product, tried to highlight the good features of it. And what, uh, Vertica SWAT team really knew what they were talking about. They were open to say where the database engine was not good at uh, all and always offered us workaround in those cases. In performance test, if, uh, if the use case results were not good enough for us, they spent hours to provide us the way to improve it. One thing which also surprises us was that the line towards the development unit was very short. Like Marco called to Maurizio and Maurizio provided us the fix by next morning. What? This has never happened to us with the other vendors. Normally, we need to wait days, week, even years to get answers. Of course, POC situation is different, but anyway. So we chose Vertica and made the agreements and started to organize the project in November. There was a couple of times house on really on fire during the project. Once already in November 2019, when Intel had worldwide delivery problems and we could not get hardware. We actually got the test and production hardware late of February. Before that, we made all the development in our very small POC environment. Then in March, COVID-19 hit the project and we needed to adopt the whole new way of working. Before that, we were all sitting in Elisa Helsinki office and communication was, of course, much easier before COVID. Then in May, we made the first and the biggest deployment and it was very hectic time for everyone. Actually, if you think about it, we did the most of the project already one and a half months earlier than deadline was. How did we organize the project? First of all, it's hard to get persons with previous experience in Vertica DB and NetEase Vertica migrations. We are using uh, mainly two vendors within our team, CGI and TCS. 
CGI in development and TCS in maintenance and support. Both have consultants who have been working with us years and know ecosystem inside out. We divided the work into technology streams and basement work. Put CGI on charge on reporting streams and TCS on ETL stream. But mixing up the streams so that each stream had at least one resource from both vendors. And each stream was led by ELISA solution manager. We pick up the current key resources from vendor size to participate into migration project. And then during the migration, Vertica was well adopted also in DFA development and DA maintenance support team. No big hassle about handover sessions. Some persons were skeptical about this organization, but I think it was just perfect. I got comments that this will never work when there is two integrator vendors involved and responsibility is divided. But also consider that point that most of these persons know each other from daily life and both know ecosystem well. I can point uh, some key values already in organization phase. Uh, we had very good technical project manager. We had highly motivated project team because they had opportunity to be part of the project already from RFP and Vertica was their own decision. Key resources knew the current ELISA ecosystem and had excellent technical competence in current BI tools. Actually, we had only one person who knew Vertica beforehand, our DBA. So I would say that Vertica as a database engine is also quite easy to adopt. Luckily then Vertica introduced us to Poslovna Intelligenza, who had the previous experience with the other similar migration. Poslovna provided us some nice accelerator tool templates made by themselves, and it helped us a lot to get ourselves into this semi-automated mode instead of doing everything manually. After organizing the project, we started the development and implementation late on 2019. We had quite intensive discussions with Vertica about the platform architecture. Vertica's recommendation was to use standby nodes as here on the top of the slide, which we found a little bit old fashioned way. We wanted to have the environment up and running 24 seven and not get into big hassle when something will be broken, like one server and one disk or some error happening on one data center. What is good in Vertica is that it can run on EA on mode and also in cloud platforms. Even though we are now on-prem, we are looking later on cloud possibility. Well, we ended up in three data center solution as here on the bottom of the slide. Of course, with all mirrored components, the environment got much more expensive than Vertica's recommended platform. I have marked here that don't try this at home because you need to be very sure about the heartbeat connection between data centers. There's a lot of traffic going on all the time between the servers, and if that is not working, it will have a huge impact. In our environment, we have tested that we, we can even have one data center totally down. It does not affect on services. We started the actual migration project in December 2019 by putting up our development environment. We migrated their users, roles, data structure, and small amount of data from NetEasa with Vertica's own internal tool called ODB. We tried to keep the structure as is. Same time, we also created a copy of NetEasa structure and same data set so that we would be able to compare the results. In second week of January, we got the project resources onboarded and then the project got started with full speed. We divided the work in phases and areas. In the beginning, I was uh, most worried about the amount of needed in MS reporting changes, but actually that stream was the first one ready from development. We tried to use semi-automated scripts provided by Poslovna, but need, did not find those useful. Changes were done manually, but those were quite trivial uh, when we got hang of it. Then Clickstream had less resources involved and took longer, but that stream also developed their own scripts to be able to semi-automate the standard changes. That stream also invented its own semi-automated testing tool for reporting outcomes, which was also used in testing MS reports. 
with SAS, we highly underestimated the work related to some of the SAS application changes. And in SAS, we run also in compatibility problems and bugs. We needed to allocate even more resources into SAS stream during the project. Changes in, in ETL Informatica stream were more challenging. Standard changes were done by Boslovna SYNQ tool, but that was not enough. We also needed some manual work on the top. Informatica was not nearly as compatible with Vertican than we first thought after POC. Yes, it was working, but needed to make quite huge changes in some, some of the ETL workflows. We got the test environment up and running as late as in March and started to test with real data. Only a couple months before we had the first deployment. First deployment was the biggest one and already done in middle of the May. We started parallel loading to Vertica. When we had verified that data is correctly migrated and data workflows were running correctly, we di directed the reports after one week to point to Vertica. Uh, still a uh, few words about the change management. Uh, from my point of view, the change management was quite uh, challenging. During the spring, we noticed errors in our existing workflows and reports. We had a choice either to copy the errors as is to the new environment or, or fix those on the way. In some cases, we thought that it's better to keep it going wrong way to be able to get the testing done automatically. And some cases we corrected it, though we knew that the result was not going to be any more the same. Notice that because we had improved the data quality on the way, the results were not the same anymore during parallel load. Vertica started to live its own better life. But some of the users were confused when after the deployment, the figures got changed. Uh, when NetEase support ended in 30th of June, we had all data safe in Vertica. The last deployment was uh, done late in July, but not in critical parts anymore. Parallel loading stopped after that. So that was our journey. Eight months demand and implementation with full productionized outcome. I would say that, that we made some kind of record. When you still add into this COVID time, when some of our team consultants got stuck in India and we needed to adopt the whole new way of working at the same time, I would say not bad, not bad at all. Here's still the overall vision about the accelerators that we used. So Vertica uh, ODB was used for structure migrations, user roles and privileges migrations, and some part of the data migrations. Then this SYNQ tool provided by uh, Poslovna, uh, which is Informatica, we uh, migrated most of our data with that one and made some standardized changes into Informatica workflows with that one. Then we had the, several of these own created tools and scripts by project team. We had this connection, connection tester used for testing the cluster functionality and failovers. Then we have a tool to modify automatically these uh, click standards changes. And then we have a three kind of uh, testing tools for data migration, ETL loadings, and then this reporting. And uh, vendors had the proposals of, also for these testing tools, but we find that, uh, that it was quite easy to make these scripts by, by ourselves. What happened then after deployment? After using Vertica in production for 12 months, I can say that overall we have been very satisfied about our new database engine. We have had only few problems and most of those right away after deployment. I was expecting a lot of hassle during autumn with lots of performance issues and team hands full of problems. Even my own boss said to me that I need to save some money for all the consultant works uh, which needs to be done after deployments. I did not use any of that money. We even sent our DBA back to India sooner than we thought. In the POC phase, Vertica proposed us flatten the tables, but we have ne not implemented those. We started to make the new projections and, and partitioning after deployments. All database engines have their own way of working, and it will take time for team and company to adopt these ways. 
it was the same with Nesisa. We were churned it for years and we knew its weaknesses and strengths as uh, at the end quite well. Now we are just in the beginning of that journey with Vertigo. In Vertigo, one of the good thing is that with small changes in SQL clauses or structures can make a huge difference and it's doable. We have had sometimes uh, memory consumption errors, which we have corrected by tuning the SQL clauses or restructured update clauses. We have also turned the memory and resource reallocations for different users group. We have done some, uh, or actually one upgrade with my down downtime, and, uh, but mainly our database environment has been stable and overall performance has improved. I asked from my team to comment Vertigo after six months, and one of the te team members said that, yes, I still like it. It's a good database engine. Very simple comment and true. There's also some other comments gathered from end users and developers. Uh, maybe something that I want to highlight uh, are these ones. I have not noticed any performance improvement or, or decrease. And quite many comments I have got was that nothing was seen. I was extremely happy about this one because this was exactly what we were looking at as is. Users have liked also Vertigo documentation and free training material. And most of them say that the migration was going smoothly. On the other hand, people have not been very happy with SAS migration and found it very complex and time consuming. Informatical compatibility was also found challenging. But of course, I'm the most happiest about this comment, best IT project I know, because I have led many IT projects in my life. And this is the first time when I hear this comment. After migration, we have also found quite nice uh, features which we have been implemented. We have included labels in our application SQL clauses, and we can now get automatic data lineage discovery by querying these labels. Then we have discovered smoothly integration from S3 object storage uh, through external tables and by copying Parkit and S JSON files. We have used parsing from JSON files into Vertica hybrid uh, flex tables, and this is very nice uh, integration. My ta team loves it. And now we are testing also Kafka uh, integration. Next thing we are looking for is, is Spark integration using Vertica Spark connector. And uh, we have not yet used machine learning functions, but I hope that our data scientists will find this one day. We are looking for unifying data warehouse and data lake and trying to simplify our architecture. So this is the next big thing what is happening in Elisa. Elisa. I think that most of you are also checking this and I hope that I can also gather some information from you that how the other companies have been implemented this or planning to implement. And of course, cloudification is something that is stated in every strategy. So that is also interesting topic. This is our logical target architecture for coming years. In data storage side, this means that we are more unifying both object storage uh, data into structured data and looking more into streaming data instead of batch processing, getting data available right away. And now finally, we will get into summary part. We had six streams, six production rollouts, an overall project took six, eight months. We got performance improvements in reporting 30% and ETL 20%. Better performance results uh, was covered uh, only something like 10, 15 reports and ETL loadings. So I would not say that this is absolutely true, but right enough. Some of the reports and loads got huge improvement, but we also turned functionality behind the scenes. And in some uh, cases, we got decrease on performance. We improved data quality on the way. And one thing which I personally like is this Active Directory integration. It was easy to implement and speeded up our user management. Now our data warehouse development timeline looks like this. I'm happy to update the slides and put that eight months there instead of years. No major performance issues after migration. Improved data quality, 
improve ETL workflows, improve performance in ETL for 20% and reporting 30%. How did this happen? There were, I pointed down now five of these um, major things, what I think that why. Project management and organization was excellent. People were motivated and brilliant. We had these automated or semi-automated testing and development tools. Excellent POC, DB features understood and compatibility tested, and good database engine. It's not about the hardware. It's not about the software. It's all about the people. But, of course, the good products helps. That's all, folks. And now to the question parts, and thanks for participating. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Now we're ready for Q&A. Elena, thank you so much. I, every time I hear you talk, I learn a lot. It's a wonderful um, experience, and I'm <laughs> proud of the impact that the verdict of people had on your uh, migration, which I think is very important. Um, I do want to tell yeah, you were great. that for everybody listening, that's fantastic. Um, for everybody listening, please remember you can type questions into the chat. We've got a number of questions already. I am going to um, ask you, because you did, one question that did come in was, because you only had one person, you said, that actually knew Vertica. That's pretty interesting. Did you and your team find that the learning curve for Vertica was a little bit steep, a little bit risky, or was it relatively easy? And, and how did you do it? I, I think it was much easier than, than I thought, because um, Vertica SQL is more near standard SQL than the TISA. And, and the system tables are really also uh, really easy to adopt. And um, my team knew already about this M MPP databases. So this, this functionality is the same in both. So, of course, there's these uh, vertical specific things which you just uh, learn by doing. So there's no, no easy way out on, on that one. But um, we had, in the beginning, we had one vertical training course prepared to our team, which uh, lasts three days. So it was December, just before the project and after the POC. But, uh, but we also skipped quite many uh, of this normal uh, DBA stuff from that material because there was nothing new for us. So we knew quite much already just uh, from Netisa because it was so similar. And uh, maybe then the hardest part of that uh, learning curve was this was and Ross containers and this double, mo double uh, movers for, for my opinion, because um, they were sort of a new thing. And uh, I still have difficulties to understand these ones, but um, of course, I'm not, I'm not the DBA, so I don't have to go so deeply in, into these um, things anymore. But uh, yes, I think it was, uh, it was quite easy to adopt. That's, and you did also mention that the, you, your team found the documentation helpful as well. Was that a part of it? Yes, but I think that we also learn in this POC phase so much. That, uh, that we didn't, I don't know if anyone really like looked into those uh, <laughs> training materials from my team anymore after that one. But uh, they, they have been more of these uh, persons who were uh, doing some SQL clauses in vertical and for a data scientists and things like uh, and persons like that, because they were not part of our, our uh, tight group. So they, they say that this material was really good. Good, okay. Another mm. question and has it's come all, in. It's uh, open for everyone. No. So that's also yes. good. Yes, and uh, I, I'll point out to the audience that in addition to the Vertica documentation, Elena is also referring to academy.vertica.com, which is the Vertica Academy that has a wide variety of on-demand self-paced training, and it's all free. It's available to everybody. So things like the tuple mover, um, you can learn more about at Vertica Academy for sure. Um, so another question that came in, and this is kind of a fun one, was in your opinion, and then maybe your team's opinion, which could be different, <laughs> what's the best feature of Vertica based on your experience? If you had to pick one, 
That's what the question is. What would you say? That that is a tough one because uh, I would I would most likely pick up that uh, that so simple as this this uh, labeling the the curious. You know, like when you get this uh, that uh, pipeline there. You know, like I think it's really excellent feature. But then on the other hand, I would say that then then the guys would uh, probably pick up something like uh, this S3 JSON uh, hybrid flex table there or something similar or Kafka integration, which they got very excited now. <laughs> well, it sounds like the answer is there's too many features for you to pick just one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pick up one, it's, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. But I like also this uh, openness, this that you can, you can sort of, uh, you are open world, <laughs> like open to everything and, and uh, nothing is sort of causing extra money to get some kind of integration, which is quite um, common in, in other platforms that you need to always spend some more money to get some feature or so that's also good for management point. <laughs> Well, that's a very good point that all of these, this functionality is part of Vertica. So you can take advantage of it now or in the future, it doesn't cost more money. And that includes mm. the whole machine learning thing you mentioned about the data scientists at Elisa, you hope will be leveraging that and it doesn't cost more, right? Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned querying data, well, the JSON data in S3, do you, what do you envision being, making a difference in being able to query data in S3 object storage, especially with external tables? Talk a little bit about, this question would like to know a little bit more about that usage and how you're gonna be, how you use that or will be using it in the future. So, uh, so that when, when I add to the queries, um, uh, I can do it from the uh, Vertica side, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that uh, that's a huge uh, benefit for us, for us because now our reporting tools, they cannot read, uh, they don't have this uh, access to S3. They don't have the connectors you know, like to that one. So it always has to be some kind of other tool there in, in the bit, between or other, other uh, database. And I find that this is really, really good that we can sort of now uh, we are using mainly these um, reporting tools like like uh, ClickView and then then Power BI, and then we can directly ask it from the Vertica side the connection, and it's it's going to get the data then from S3. So that's that's a huge uh, makes a lot of difference. So we don't have to sort of copy anything. But now we have um, used this copy. So we're going to copy it to the Vertica and then we are using it for Vertica. But in the future, it might be that we are just uh, uh, directing it to S3. So mm -hmm. it will be a, a, a lot of relief. Mm. Yeah, just Do you so see the job. opportunity to, to do joins between data that stays in S3 with data in Vertica? No, no, I don't uh, really see that we would make a choice. We would either, you know, like ask it then this raw data or, or something which is, you know, like in, in S3 and uh, in, in there and then then make uh, uh, make uh, SQL clauses through that vertical into there. But maybe mixing up, I don't know how it works. I'm pretty skeptical at this moment when we haven't really uh, work it out. Now we have only copied the uh, small amount of data to Vertica side through this uh, JSON files or something because the structure is really, really great in that one. And then like uh, from this Kafka integration. So, but we have now uh, copied the data in Vertica instead of just pushing it through. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. But I'm pretty skeptical about this uh, performance items always that how would that work then you know, like if we will have a huge bunch set in, in S3 and we would want to first of all you know, like get that from the reporting tool. Uh, they, are, they have a limitations in this data uh, amount of data. So they are not very flexible if you if you would read there to Power Bay something like uh, billions of rows. So it doesn't work. So it has to be modeled also somewhere. And uh, or it, that's that's how I see it. So there's this kind of problem. 
that modeling should be done then in vertical side. And um, okay, yes, but so it's I... going to make a great difference. You know, like for us to, we can really start to thinking about this, unifying this to data storage. That's definitely uh, part of the reason that this is called the Vertica Unify Conference. <laughs> So I have, well, actually I have two more questions because we only have about four more minutes. So this is not a surprising question, um, I think, Elena, in that somebody would like to know a little bit more about the size and scale of your Vertica deployment. And especially given the remarkable, I had no idea that Elisa was uh, the first 5G rollout and the amount of data that is used in Finland. I'm very impressed. I would have thought the US would be much higher up that chart and I was wrong. <laughs> so um, uh, this question really is about some statistical sizing. How many users, you know, how much data, like that. So how much um, users we have in, in where, in, in Vertica? Or? Using Vertica, right. Concurrent users, Use, how using much data Vertica. you're loading. Mm -hmm. uh, I had this um, in my uh, in my presentation. I had this uh, 40 terabytes of, of data, you know, like in, in, in our vertical site, which is now uh, it it uh, turned out to be about uh, it's now about 200 uh, terabytes of uh, data. So in in vertical site, which is models and and sort of um, so yeah, 180 terabytes, 200. And, and what, what else users. was it? How many uh, users we have uh, about, uh, let's say that uh, these who will directly connect to the uh, connect to the database, there they are uh, not so many. There's maybe 200 users, I would say. But then we have, of course, we have this uh, then true reporting tools. They will come uh, much more, but they are not uh, counted as sort of vertical users. They are then this, uh, we have about 1,000 uh, uh, click view uh, users, which are connecting to the uh, vertical, and then then um, about 600 maybe uh, Power BI users. Well, all of that, I think actually, in my judgment, does count toward what the Vertica engine is serving. So that's, uh, that's good information in terms of answering this question. And then mm -hmm. the last question for the day is, you know, what is your next project with Vertica as you look to the future? What's your priority? Is it in the machine learning space or what, what do you have as your next big idea? Because clearly um, the migration was your big idea. You were right, even though they said mission impossible. Uh, so what's your next big uh, project mm -hmm. idea? Uh, but we have um, just um, launched this RFI for unifying this uh, integration platform. So that's, it doesn't now uh, cover this uh, data storage uh, part, but the integration. So how to get this S3 and Vertica uh, to be more integrated to each, each other and what are those uh, methods. So that's, that's the biggest thing, what's happening next. Plus, we have this uh, S3 migration coming uh, next. So that's now the um, autumn's job to migrate uh, S3 from, from CEPH uh, 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 to, to um, uh, Dell ECS platform. So okay. that's a huge one. Yeah. Well, um, that's good to know that you won't be bored. You'll have plenty to do yeah. in the future. <laughs> That's a good thing. So now we are just about out of time. Um, and I do want to encourage to tell, let everybody know that, of course, this session will be recorded. So uh, is being recorded. So you can watch it on demand and or share it with colleagues who you say would really get value from this. Um, and that is I really want to thank you, Elena. Uh, for joining us. I also do want everybody to know that you will see both of us on Thursday at the Data Gals panel, um, which will be a really fun discussion. So with that, thank you very much for this, and um, we will see you again, you again, on Thursday. And now, for those of you that are watching and want to 
earn points, win prizes, and make a difference in a dog's life, enter the code Schnauzer, S-C-H-N-A-U-Z-E-R. Enter the code Schnauzer into the Analyze to Win game and you'll earn points. And thank you very much for participating in this session.